All right, I'm going to show one cap going in. Uh, let's see, C310, uh, EL for electrolytic, um, 1000 microfarad, and 35 volt. Here's, here's the new part. And the uh, the polarity you have to watch those on these electrolytics. The the line is for the negative, and also the the shorter lead is also representation or representative of the uh, negative terminal. And here's here's the old uh, C three ten. Now I'm not saying that part's bad, but I'm replacing all the electrolytics associated with the vertical section because of the vertical linearity problem. And uh, the more I researched it, the more I had conflict and information about what could be the bad one doing that. So I said, well, I'll just replace all of them. There's no uh, swelling of any of these throughout the entire board. I think Toshiba used good parts. Uh, I really do. I don't think they really scrimped and used cheapo stuff. I mean, for this thing working for 18 years with no problems, I would say they use good parts. All right, so that's the new C310 I installed. And that's the old part here that I took out. This was made by a company called Rubicon. You can see I used the same voltage, 35 volts and 1,000 microfarad. And, you know, if, if you can, it's better if you use the same tolerance. And uh, I used the same tolerance on almost all the caps. There was one cap I couldn't get the 10% tolerance, so I had to use the 20. So I got actually two of those caps in case, well, I'll see if it doesn't work right. I'll just uh, try the other cap, maybe a little closer. But... Um, most of the caps are 20% tolerance. There was, I think, one that was 10%, but I had to get the 20% tolerance for that. But it's fairly simple. It, it's a lot easier to repair a circuit board, I think, than to do point-to-point -point, uh, tube electronics, to be honest with you. This is this is pretty easy. And they even label the board, you know, where plus and minus is on the board, so you can double-check your work. So it's pretty much foolproof if you just take your time. But like I wanted to mention, these Rubicon actually I think is a good name. Um, the, uh, Newark sells Rubicon, and they had uh, some of your more uh, famous names. So I like getting the best part I could put in to the electronics, and uh, that's all I'm saying. So I'm going to continue and get this thing rocking and rolling. Now this is one thing I wanted to point out. There was some people online on the blogs, and they said that C308 was like a culprit in causing the linearity problem. Well, you know, I, I can't really find this stuff out until I actually take the thing apart, but this is C308 here, and it's sitting right next to the heat sink. And there's the transistor here, the vertical output transistor. So it's only like, God, sixteenth of an inch away, literally sixteenth of an inch away from the power, the power transistor. So I could see this thing shifting values and causing that linearity problem. That was C three o eight. So in case you want to make a note of that, that is right next to the uh, the output transformer and the heatsink, but. There's the, let's say transformer, I mean transistor, right next to the transistor. So uh, that's going to heat up, guarantee it. So that's really not the best design that Toshiba did there. But I guess they couldn't do everything correct. You have to have some planned obsoles obsolescence in there. Yeah, I'm also replacing some of the polyfilm caps too. This one's a .22 microfarad. I figure as long as I got the thing apart, I'm just going to replace all the, all the capacitors associated with a vertical section. And um, I don't know if I mentioned it, but the set is just so doggone heavy, you know, to take it out of the living room and carry it and to carry it back and reset it up. I might as well just uh, hit all the caps all in one shot that deal with the vertical. 
because I don't want to keep uh, taking this thing apart and working on it. Oh yeah, what I wanted to mention too is that these uh, polyfilm capacitors are right next to the heat sink. I mean right next to it. So uh, it's probably a good idea to replace those too. Yeah, I just replaced this electrolytic, 10 microfarad, 50 volts, and I'm installing it, but I'm bending it away from the heat sink. See the heat sink here? The other one was like laying practically on the heat sink. So I'm just going to bend it away from it to keep the heat off of it. Okay, I got one more cap to do, one more electrolytic cap. It's, uh, it's here. It's below the main the main chip here. This chip does a lot. It does a lot of video. It does uh, the vertical ramping. And here's C301. Let me enlarge that a little bit. It's it's away from the other vertical. Yeah, here's C301 on the top side. I'll point to it here with this tool. Let's see, it's actually a different color than there's another one that's that same color, but most of the caps in here are like kind of like uh, like this, like black, or they're like blue. This one's a brown color here, and that's where it's located. It's, it's located inside this uh, this shielded area, so it could kind of fool you. It's not located near any of the vertical things, so um, you got to get that replaced. That's important because that's involved in the uh, in the vertical ramping. It's it's at the input of the op amp that's inside of here and also it it has something to do with the feedback so I think if this is leaky it could change like I said the waveform and that could probably affect the linearity so I just mentioned it I know I'm talking a lot but I'm mentioning that because it's not near the other caps you know and someone can miss it because it's there. Okay, I got it in. I just got to clip, clip the leads there. There's one more cap called C315. And that goes, uh, it's the coupling cap that goes into um, the um, vertical horizontal separator. Now, I didn't order that cap. But that was the last uh, electrolytic in, in the C series. Like if someone wanted to replace all the caps that was in that C series, like uh, C301 and C305, 3C3, uh, C306, this was C315. But I didn't order that one because it was some coupling cap. And I, I noticed that uh, last night when I was looking at the schematic. And I'll show you that later too. But that goes into the horizontal and vertebrae, uh, vertical separator, but it doesn't seem to be involved with any of the uh, waveform um, uh, modification or waveform creation. So uh, I, di I didn't bother that one, so I hope that's not like a bad one. But what i got to do is just put it inside the set and uh, fire it up and see what happens. Okay, here's the schematic, and this is what I wanted to show you. This is the main chip here. i got to blow it up here so it makes sense. What I want to show you is this. This is the uh, right over here is the C100. This is electrolytic plus minus. It goes to ground here. Here's the height adjustment, and you can see that 
this here could affect the uh, the waveform because if this thing was like leaky, it'd be killing the signal as you adjust the height. You can see here's the vertical ramp here. So you have a uh, vertical here, horizontal here. Here's the vertical ramp. It's fed into the op amp. And here, it's coupled into the op amp here. And I think this op amp has something to do with the uh, the actual the, the adjustment of vertical linearity. I think they have it all engineered here, in, engineered out here. Because if you kind of follow follow the output of the op amp, goes through the circuit there. It's coming down here and it's going into the drive, and that's the this is the vertical output IC here. So that goes into the drive here. So that's what I wanted to show you. That was 301. Now there's another one. Another cap that I, I didn't buy this other cap. And here's the vertical ramp again. Here's your horizontal vertical separator. And if you follow the input, kind of goes here. This is a C315 2.2 microfarad. So you follow that and it goes into the HV separator. Now this, this also kind of pertains to the vertical too. So maybe I should have changed that too, but I didn't order that because, you know, I'm looking at it and I said, well, I have vertical. And if you look at it here, this is the vertical ramp function here where the actual, the, the ramp is made for the vertical. So, you know, I'm at a quandary here. I don't know if I should have ordered this one or not, but I'm going to have to try to set and... If I still have a vertical linearity problem, I'll have to replace that one too. So now the step here is to get the thing together and, and see if it works.